The 6-0 is completely useless though. Um, I've been RT'd twice and just died because it has no armor. Like, I, I don't even know. What's the roof? 5? Five? 5-7 five, and 18 on the front. Yeah, so I've just been RT'd twice from miles away. It's hit this, the radiator, and killed me because there's only 4 millimeters of armor here. The race to the Sabre, yeah. I mean, that match, I went, what, 1-1 one one in the STRV? So right now, I'm like 8-5. and five. So that's not too bad. You know, I'm just playing it really defensively. You took the IKV-103 out of your lineup because it was so frustrating? Yeah, I... Even after, like, three or four games, I can understand why. Like, I, I think, for me personally... I would rather have in this lineup the PVKV or the Delat Torn. It also would lower my BR. But the reason why I'm going to be playing at 6-0 anyway is because I'm, I'm going to bring along this when I have it. So I might as well get used to it. <laughs> you know? The other thing, uh, the other problem with the STRV-74 is it's just... God, it's it's just massive, man. Big chunky. Hopefully at some point it gets a bit smaller. I don't know, maybe we can give it some uh, anti-growth hormone. Shrink it down a bit. Because the... I suppose, right, so the issue isn't the, 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 issue isn't the size. And the, this is something I need to always clarify when I'm talking about these vehicles. Because something like this is also pretty tall. The, the issue is, is the amount of tank that you have to expose until you can actually fire back. Because there's a lot of tall tanks out there which have pretty high guns, right? And they're pretty high guns, meaning that you can not expose a lot of your vehicle in order to fire. But with the SGRV-74, you actually have to um, expose about half of this gigantic turret, right? So it's simple as that. Do you see a BR re revision for some Swedish vehicles in the short term or too close to launch? Um, they normally wait like a month or a month and a half and to do it. So I wouldn't be surprised if by the end of April we see a lot of BR revisions. That's pretty much the timeline it's been for Italy when they introduced them and also the uh, Swedish aviation vehicles. But I think, I think we could see, like, I, I think some are incredibly obvious. Like, the PVKV is way too low. The Delat Torn is fine, I suppose. The uh, machines such as the IKV are way too high uh, for what they are. So, and also, like, the Largo, that's obviously going to go down as well. Yeah, the issue isn't the size, it just contributes to it. <laughs> oh, but, uh, but yeah, it's um it's an unfortunate thing for this oh my god. See what I mean? Like I shouldn't I I shouldn't be able to peek this from here, like with any vehicle, but lo and behold, the massive monstrosity that is the SCRV seventy four can do it. But yeah, I, I can definitely see BR um I can definitely see those VR changes very quickly because it, it's in, it's it, it must be obvious, right? And if it isn't obvious, then there is a serious problem uh, that needs to be addressed. Like when the world is telling you to not bash your head against the wall, it is normally a good ploy to not then bash your head against said wall. So I'm wondering, because we have such good gun depression, maybe we actually do this instead. Oh, cheeky. Oh, maybe not. Oh. Oh! <laughs> Close but no cookie. Now my face is not hurting anymore, so... Wonderful! I wonder if it's linked to eating. It seems to be linked to eating. We'll see. So that guy knows we're here. Uh, also, if anybody comes down that road, they know we're here. Ooh, get popped, son. Uh, so we'll see what goes on. 
That guy's probably moved. Nobody on the central area yet. That guy's still there. He's just trying to find a position where he can shoot. <sighs> They'll never learn. It's also a beautiful ammunition pop right there. That guy had full ammunition. Like, what are you doing? Oh, cheeky. Hello. How's life, hard lad? What is hole break for five? Oh, he died anyway. But still. Surely that should hole break that dude. Why does that not hole break? Oh, Chunky. Hello. Oh. If he'd stayed, it might have done a bit more. But he didn't. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We got it. Oh, he gets popped too. Beautiful shot, eyes too. Oh, guy pushed up though. Night night. I'm gonna head to bed now, six in the morning again. See you later, disturbed. Have a nice evening. Yeah, you can see you can see so from what a surprise, a position which is really good with gun depression, the SDRV does pretty well, right? Especially when you have the snow here which can cover your vehicle. You know, you can you can pretty much just sit here and just cap people as you always do in vehicles like this. Like th this isn't just an STRV specific one. It's just nice that the STRV has access to stuff like this. Um, but the the fact that it is so large definitely is not going to help it ever. I'm focusing on my first nation to grind against the top tier. And it's going to be Italy. Tank is pretty weird looking, but also pretty cool. It is definitely odd looking, isn't it? And it's another example of why Sweden never got into a war. Uh, because this was made uh, very late on when you look at its history. So there's nobody there, nobody here. And nobody here for now. Squished M47? Yeah, somebody did give it a bit of a tuck in the sides. <laughs> Squished M47. Uh, it's true, it is. But at least, like, you know, the, the ammo isn't too bad on it. Could be a lot worse. Uh, I think if you go up against heavies at 6.7, which obviously this being 5.7, that's going to happen, right? It's just a sad reality of life. You're going to struggle against them, but, you know, it is how it is. There's a lot of tanks at 5.7 that struggle against 6.7 heavies. Luckily, they moved up. Um, they moved up the T29. So we don't have to worry about that. Instead, it seems like we're mainly facing stuff like Tiger 2s, Bulldogs, uh, T34s, Super Pershing. So we can deal with them. We can deal with them. It's not the end of the world. So far, we have four pe four kills. And th these are the types of positions, right, that I really miss when I play stuff like Chinese vehicles or Soviet vehicles. Because this is such this is such a great position. You can dominate the center of the battlefield from it. Well, that's just rude. Um, you can dominate the center of the battle f uh, from it. You can do pretty well from this position. Oh, uh, this dude's just clattered off something. Oh, hello. Sneak it in that drive wheel. Right, that's the ace. And that's because we can use this position really well. Problem is, though, we might have to make a move because obviously the team is not winning and we've lost Charlie. Like, Charlie's gone. <laughs> Charlie doesn't exist anymore. Looks like there's some 50 cows over there. It's kind of surprising seeing a lot of people play the German Bulldog. Maybe they're trying to ace it. Um, but playing it really aggressively. I'm guessing it's because it has a, a Heat FS that people are playing it way more aggressively than they do the um, they do the American Bulldog with Sabre. 
Because normally with the, with the American Bulldog, it's much better to just play it passively. Why is there a T-34 there? It's just chilling. So, they're nearly on Alpha. Oh, that's no bueno. Where did he get shot from? I can't really do anything against the Tiger 2 unless I see its side. Which is a possibility, you know? It's, uh, it's something that can happen, especially if we fight around Bravo. But we've taken Alpha, so well done to the team. Ah, there's a Panther. Really? Oh, so close. Oh, don't back up. Don't back up, baby. Don't back up. Stay right there. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. Damn it. I needed that to go in. Could you cease with the heresy, please? Right. There's a guy sat here, guys. Can you not hear his machine guns? Any idea why there isn't much of an emphasis on map positioning and strategy compared to World of Tanks? Uh, because there is a lot less of a... There's a lot... If you if you die in World of Tanks, you're out of the game. Where in War Thunder, that's not the case, right? So, people don't play in War Thunder like they are the... You know, they, they only have one spawn. People play a little bit more aggressively, a little bit more crazily, and you can't blame them, because... What it means is, how long are these guys' machine guns? And does he not run out? Um, a lot of people play uh, very much aggressively in War Thunder because, well, if it, if it goes wrong, you get another spawn. See, that guy clipped the top of my turret there. As you can see, otherwise it would have killed that other guy. So that's, uh, that's the problem with this position Hello, sometimes. Thank you for the uh, follow dragon level. Maybe maybe we've got a machine gun bug going again. Cause I can I can literally hear this guy here. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but <laughs> I definitely can. The IS2's back. Hopefully he can donk him, because this guy's obviously focused on me. Good stuff. Well done, IS2. Put that brother out of a misery. Well, it, that's you, the thing is, Midnight, it should be. Positioning should be the most important thing in War Thunder, um, and people should play like they only have one or two lives. But the problem is they don't. Uh, they, they play a lot more aggressively, and then they wonder why their repair costs are really expensive and they can't afford anything. It's, uh, it's a true travesty of our time. But if they played a little bit more passively, and just, you know, played to played to win instead of played to get kills and stuff like that, then I think the game would benefit a lot. It would be interesting if they ever... The, the other problem in War Thunder as well is you have so many hard counters in War Thunder, like Cass to tanks, uh, tanks to AA... Uh, SPGs to specific other SPGs, artillery even for light vehicles. You have so many things that can kill you in the game compared to World of Tanks, where it is just tank on tank combat. That is also an issue in War Thunder. So no matter what, you could play a game perfectly. You could play a game strategically the best any human has ever done so, but you could just get bombed because somebody decided to bomb you, right? So it's, it's one of those things where um, it's one of those things where because of that fact people are going to play a bit more aggressively and, that, and that's also why like um, you know trying to compare the two games is really hard to do because they, they have such different ways of playing such different play styles and such different uh, ways to you know do it Somebody cover me. 
just a tiger. Just uh, it's, I think it's a furry tiger. If you don't know, the furry tiger was the first Builder Bear event uh, in War Thunder. It was an April Fools, not last year, but the year before, where they tested all of the Builder Bear mechanics. There was the Cobra Cobra, the King Cobra, for the Americans, and then also the furry tiger. And you can tell it by its iconic skin, where it looks like a tiger skin. I think it's also available on the market. Yeah, it was a furry tiger. There you go. <laughs> uh, you can you can also see it uh, on the market. I think you can still buy it on the market, if I remember correctly. Oh, these guys have missed someone. He actually got past them. Also, there's this weird incessant need to always push in War Thunder, and I've never understood it at all. Like, why? Why do we have to keep pushing? Like, there's no reason for these guys to be in the spawn right now. Like, all it, all it does is, it means if somebody gets around them, they die. It's very odd. I, I know there's a guy here. It's kind of sad. I watch Lemming Train s sometimes. Oop. Attention to the map. Cheeky cheeky. So we could metagame it a little bit there. Jesus. Right, that needs to be changed. That's way too loud. Um, but there, there is a little meta game you could play there if you wanted to get more points. So what you could have done it, or in that situation, I could have let that dude cap or let that dude get close to capping, then kill him. Then I get the I get the points for the kill, and I also get the points for the cap. So you would be double dipping. Now obviously this is a little bit uh, more risky to do, um, because obviously maybe he might be looking in your direction as he's set up and everything, but still. You know, it's something you can do. Uh, I watch Lemon Train sometimes, a pretty popular World of Tanks YouTuber that does coaching and videos about positioning, commentary, etc. In, in War Thunder, there's no one who does that. Basic guides are obviously a thing in uh, YouTube War Thunder. I adore commentary, coaching, map strategy, but it's rough in War Thunder. Yeah, it is. And it's, um, I mean, I, I've made a few videos um, which are uh, in aviation and also in ground when it comes to uh, basically I go through my thought processes so I'll like do a replay and look at a game that I played and I'll go through what I'm thinking at the time what I have to be focused on and all of that stuff and why I'm doing what I'm doing and and all the matchups that I'm facing I've done a few videos like that in the past and I really enjoy doing them but um, uh, when I've ever done polls or when I've ever done stuff like that asking what people want to see uh, nobody says that stuff and when it comes to like map analysis which is another part of the game I really enjoy doing. It's another one of those things that people aren't too interested in. Uh, so yeah, it's just uh, just is how it is sometimes. Pushing in more thunder after cap is frustrating. Yeah, because there's no reason to. There's absolutely no reason to. Like you don't really gain a position, especially on this map. I just hold the cap. They have to push you. Why are you pushing them? Like there's, there's so many times where I've had matches just completely lost by this. Like you can see that this match could have easily been lost by this. One of the guys died over there, so there's one dude left holding that road. He's seen on the map, so people know where he is, and all you have to do is push the other two roads. And he gets screwed. Yeah, I'll probably do a map analysis on the Swedish map uh, when I get more, uh, more of a feel of it. Because right now, uh, it seems a bit all over the place. And the other one is, I will do more thought process videos in the future. Because I, I do really enjoy doing them. And I haven't really done any tank ones. But I feel like in these streams, like I can just do them in the streams. And if I want to, I, I can take this uh, game, which I'll probably do, and just upload it to, you know, upload it to the YouTube so people can look at it and be like, yeah, uh, this is what he's doing, this is why he's doing it, maybe I can learn something from it. That was a third place victory, six kills. Obviously we used quite a good position for the STRV-74. And we got our BR, which was probably the main thing there. You know, we didn't play at 6-7. Got filters, LVKV's nearly done. We need two more games like that and it'll be done. And whoa, we are living in the money right now when it comes to 74. Wonderful stuff.